So lately, I haven't been able to come up with water review uh, topics or videos or anything to cover like that. So we can do one of those rare gameplay, live gameplay videos. Uh, and it's actually a pretty got, good opportunity because you're going to be checking out uh, where is it? There it is. The Mahakam Ale Fest. Neat little side activity if you haven't tried it out yet. It's basically like a. Um, it almost feels like a tavern brawl from Hearthstone, which is really cool. I hope they introduce, like, I'd love it if they did one of these a month. It wouldn't need to be, like, a whole six of these, which, all of which are pretty unique. Maybe just, you know, some kind of fun activity that you can kind of partake in. Like, maybe some, sometimes it's a puzzle, like in Battle of the Bard. Sometimes it's just kind of like a silly, just, you know, play out this difficult scenario and then, or rel this silly scenario, and then have a difficult version of it. You know, just like one of each. Right. I think that would be really cool. Something to do just kind of once a month or even, you know, every two months, maybe they do this whole like six panel or six uh, thing one. Anyway, uh, so we're just going to kind of look, uh, jump into the one I've been trying to do, the one I've been stuck on for a little bit. Uh, so this is a battle of the bards. It's a little bit different, of course, from your normal standard gameplay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to skip through all this text. You can, you can check it on your own time. It's nothing particularly interesting, I don't think, but. Uh, then again, I've never I didn't play through the the entirety of The Witcher, so maybe this is actually some pretty cool content that I'm missing out on, but I don't really care. Uh, so basically, the point of this is I'm trying to get all of I'm trying to get four uh, fest goers on my range row before he gets four range goers on his, the four festival uh, four festival goers on his range row. Uh, and each of these guys has a little bit of a special ability. So uh, usually. So I had to get four in four turns. It's pretty difficult. I'm pretty sure there's one exact answer, and I just haven't stamp, stumbled apart, uh, across it yet. And of course, I'm not just going to look up the answer because that takes out all the fun. The easier version of this gives you like two more cards, I think, which makes it, uh, you know, more doable. Being stuck with only four, it's, it's, it's pretty tricky. I know, like, I know for a fact that each and every one of these plays. No, wait. I think I have five opportunities to get a fest goer on my range row, but it has to be executed in such a precise fashion. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to open with Priscilla. And Priscilla basically will move if I don't have any units on my range on my melee row, it'll move I can pick one from his side and put it over to my range row. And that happens as soon as she's played, and then she comes back in my hand in two turns. So basically, I'm trying to take down his timer so that he moves these to his range row, and then I can eventually take advantage of that later. I think this is kind of where I'm like I'm having trouble figuring out. I'm almost I'm somewhat sure that playing Priscilla first is the right play because I'm trying to hit, make him hit his timer twice in this round or in this game, this match, and then I'm trying to somehow. Try and stall a little bit, but then going from here, do I move a melee to my range? Or do I move an opposing melee to my melee? Or my melee to his melee? I think this is where I'm getting tripped up. Like on this exact turn right here. So I think usually I do something like this. I just use my first melody. Bring this guy over. And because it's golden, it can't be interacted with. But his aren't golden until he gets four. But I mean, as soon as he gets four, he wants the game. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so this time, I think usually I would try to stem out by playing Priscilla to try and run down the timer more. Uh, see, there's like each, like each like play has such a very like ripple effect on the rest of the match. I think if you just get one wrong, then you lose and you have to restart. So yeah, so it has to be absolutely perfect. And like when you have four moves with quite a lot of possibilities, it's it's hard. Although I may be missing something obvious. It's totally possible. Again, I haven't seen anyone do this. I haven't gotten any heads or anything. Actively avoiding that. Although for the sake of this video, I may just look it up. <laughs> All right. So I think I'll move this over. And then I'll play Priscilla next. And I'll move This guy over. Uh, but see, that's like, that's the whole problem. Because then I play this. 
and I bring this over. Wait, did I just solve it? Wait. Wait, what? Did I just solve it? What the hell? I was stuck on this for like two hours yesterday and I solved it on a whim? What the hell? What? I thought I did like every possible combination of that. Of what I just did. What? That totally, like, that was not expected whatsoever. I need to look that, over, that video over again and see what... I... that's... huh. Weird. Ah, <sighs> okay then. I guess I just saw that one on my first try, somehow. I'm trying to think back. So I did Priscilla first. And I wasn't even like particularly thinking out all these different ways I could have won it. I was just kind of like playing them out, trying to figure out how to explain it best. So I played Priscilla. Then I played double chord. And then I moved a melee over to my row. And then his guy triggered and then Priscilla came back to my hand. No, no, no. I did Priscilla, double chord, Priscilla, move melee, Priscilla. I think. I thought I did that though. I don't know what I did differently. Uh, so we're going to look at the, the trial of the glasses. This one's kind of tricky. Um, definitely doable, of course. I think I did this one on my like fifth try or something like that. You just have to be very careful on um, like your like timings and your reaction plays. Uh, so there's no mulliganing. You just have to go into this. Um, a big factor is using Zoltan correctly. I was using Zoltan pretty incorrectly before, but I think I've got kind of the gist of it now. So I'm going to start off with a Mahakam Ale. I'm just checking to make, I'm trying to remember if this is what I did last time, what I did win. So I do this one because this instantly gives me a, a Drunken Dwarf, which sets the timer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Text, text, text. I wonder if like the story mode is going to be just like this. You kind of have like a preset hand. And like a particular like a particular objective or you know gimmick. And then you have just kind of little bits of text on the side. I hope it's not like that. If it's like uh like the story mode that they're kind of like proposing it to be, and I haven't looked too much into the details, but I hope you have like actual like it doesn't have to be like cutscenes or anything, obviously, but just you know, more like page full text kind of idea, like with dialogue and things, and maybe just like you know, two portraits or something. I, I feel like you do you could do more with the story mode in Gwent. Without being limited to just this this relatively boring to look at game board, but we'll see. And again, I haven't looked up anything on that that front. So, so my next play is to play Gabor. I'm trying to make sure I'm placing this right as well. And I spawn another ale. Start getting those drunken dwarfs going. Yes, yes, yes. Text, text, text. Get another ale out here, and then I place it right here. Yeah, because I want to put Yarpin in between those two ales. Uh, because Yarpin does not regress since he's being strengthened. Okay, I think this is the point. Ah, I forget. I'm going to go ahead and go with Yarpin here, and then I'll do Zoltan next. I think that's a safe play. Yes, okay, so this is a double... Effect. So I'm killing the drunken sailors so they don't spawn anyone. And I'm also moving these guys off the range row so whenever he does get his casket, or if he's trying to get his casket, he won't get it. So he's got an ale. I've got my ale as well. I think I'm going to strengthen my Yarpin so that into the next round he'll be more powerful. And just as a note, this is the more difficult version of the this challenge. Okay, usually he would poison my ales, but he didn't do that this time, which is kind of nice. Okay, so now I have a 22 strength Yarpin. I draw into a dwarf. Unfortunately, Yarpin and the Mahakam Defender is not on the same row. That would have been nice. Hmm. I think I'll play out the defender first. I 
I'm pretty sure the last time I won this, I did it by playing out the second round and trying to get these ales off. I'm placing on the left side, so whenever I do use Sheldon, uh, actually it didn't work. It's on a random row. I think on the one I beat it, when I did beat it, it uh, this guy didn't spawn here. Which is kind of unfortunate. Although I, do, I can drag it away from it. I don't think I need to do that yet, though. I'm also kind of wasting this, so I'll do this first. I'll put this on this side, and then start buffing out the defender. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Okay, so I need to move this. Or I can just stop here. Would there be any negative side of stopping here? Ah, uh, kind of. Thing I don't remember. Hmm. Shoot. Oh, that's right. I have to keep going until he plays. Uh, there's a card, a particular card that he plays, uh, that really wrecks you, and then you have to force to you have to be forced to lose. So he gets out of his casket, and then he plays uh, uh, the 20 strength gold guy. So I need to keep playing until he plays that. So he hasn't done it just yet. I'll go ahead and Sheldon Scraggs that. Or I can poison it. I don't have a lot of opportunities to use my foul ale, so I'll go ahead and use it now. Damn, I still need him to use... Uh, I still need him to use the 20 strength uh 20 strength guy. Damn, he's not why isn't he using it? What? The? This could be a mistake. Cuz only buffs by one, right? That's not even very good. Oh no. If he passes on me. No, okay, he finally played it. That may have been a, an an error in the AI, but I'm still going to take advantage of it. Anyway, <laughs> Okay, so this is uh this is where you pass. Whenever he gets this ale out, it's like practically impossible to win the round by that point. It's so strong. And you don't get that ale either. You get it in the easy mode, but not in this more difficult one. So I have an ale. And I have Sheldon Scraggs. Oh yeah, he I feel like he should have pulled out the Queen's Guard, but the his AI doesn't doesn't do that. I'll place it on this side right here. So if he does happen to play another ale, I'll be able to take advantage of it. Ah, and he turns it to mush. Ah, uh, no, wait, seven? Does he got it? He doesn't have it, so I won, I won the, the difficult version on the first try. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, but a lot of the, a lot of like rounds one and two are a lot of nuance. I wonder what his last card was, or if there was just like an error in the AI, just like we saw with uh, not passing on me and also using the revive to not pull the Queen's card. I don't know. Whatever. It's kind of tricky, though. I think if you can just win rounds one and two, or if you can win round one, if you can win round one, and then you can go into round two with him playing the 20 strength guy, you should be fine for round three. Uh, so long as you don't completely ignore Mahakam Defender. Okay, and I'll just try this once, and then we'll end this this rare game live gameplay. I don't like live gameplay, but okay. So I completely forget how this one goes. Move this unit to random row. Strengthen all units by one. All right, so we'll play it this clan on crate warriors. Clan on crate. <sighs> Spawn some dudes. I completely forget how this one works. I know he, he spawns a lot of units, but beyond that, I forget what he does. Play this one out, and then we'll play out Warcry. And then we'll play Audrin. Oh, did he just consume that? What the hell? And I can't revive it either. I know I have a revive in a later round, but not now. So if I strengthen this by four, does it buff? Does it over buff it?
Also, all these say strengthen instead of boost, which is interesting. I think I'll, I'll, I'll test it out with this. Yeah, okay, it still keeps his damage. So I think I keep trying to buff his buff him as much as possible without making him go over. And then whenever I do have a revive, I'll use it then. Oh, I should have put this guy right next to him so I can use Thunderbolt Potion. This is not very good. <laughs> I'm messing this up. But yeah, I could definitely see where 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 the the winning strategy is. It's to buff one of these guys up as much as possible. And then uh revive him around three. Does he always eat something? Wait, what? The lowest enemy. And then they do this stupid thing where they give me this this doll, which is annoying. Oh, and this has resilience too. Wow, this is really difficult, isn't it? Alright, so I'll go ahead and use... Uh, I wish this guy had stayed on there one more time. Whatever, I'll just use this now. Okay, so it's not it's not too much of a disaster. He's still winning by quite a lot. And he has his resilient unit, which is gonna be difficult to beat. I wonder if I just pass now. Oh, this doesn't have resilience. Oh man, I'm just gonna get like wrecked. Riggity riggity really wrecked. This does nothing. I think I have to pass next turn, or else he's gonna consume something else. But then all he'll consume is this. So maybe I let him. Ugh, he completely avoided this top row. So this gives me nine. Nowhere near enough. And his his resilience is so much better than mine. Oh wow, he even has his uh, wow. This is gonna be bad. Yeah, there's my revive, but it's going to be completely useless. I can't mulligan or anything. Maybe the idea is to try and buff this guy as much as possible since he has permanent resilience. Oh my gosh, look at all the strength he's got, though. Wow, he passed on me. Oh well, I can actually win this round, just barely. Oh no, I can't, not anymore. Damn. This is difficult, but I can definitely see where the strategy is. I think you're supposed to buff up this guy as much as possible. Because since he has permanent resilience, you can just carry him to rounds two and three. Like win round one at all costs with Audrin by putting him out as soon as possible, getting him damaged. But how do you get him damaged? You don't get him damaged, you just try and buff him as much as possible. But I can see where it goes. Anyway, so that's it. Just kind of taking a look at this cool little mode. It's neat. I hope they do more stuff like this. Thanks for watching.